Display referred workflow versus scene referred workflow. What exactly do these phrases mean and how does it impact the way we edit our photos? I will do my best to answer that in this video. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 91 of Understanding Darktable. After episode 89, where I stated that I was in a little bit of a funk and I wasn't sure what I was going to do next with regards content for this channel, you all yelled out with ideas and something that came up more than once was you know, this whole concept of display referred workflow and scene referred workflow and what's the difference and how should I approach it and, you know, what changes. And as I have said in the past on this channel, if there's one thing I hate on YouTube, it is seeing a content creator try and cover a topic they don't understand and completely balls it up, right? As a professional audio engineer of way many more years than I would care to admit since 1987 you can do the maths believe me I've seen plenty of videos on YouTube by you know guys with much much less experience than me trying to talk about certain principles of audio engineering and within 30 seconds I can just go yeah you haven't got a clue of what you're talking about bud and I really don't want to fall into that trap. I've been as honest as I can be right along, right, right from episode one of the things that I know and the things that I don't know. And so with this particular topic, I felt like I was on that precipice again. So when in a situation like that, what do you do? You go to the source. So I wrote to Aurelian and I said, look, you know, as much as I appreciate the fact that you will write me these lengthy emails when I ask for advice and input, um, I don't expect you to reinvent the wheel. I'm sure you've covered this elsewhere. Can you just point me to a discussion on the difference between display referred workflow and scene referred workflow? And in true Aurelian fashion, he wrote me a thousand word email. Champion. Thank you, Aurelian. <laughs> now, it certainly helped me understand the difference a little bit, but I still feel like there are parts that I don't fully understand. So I asked him if it was okay for me to include parts of his email in this video, and he said yes, that was fine. So what I'm going to do is paraphrase his email as best as I can to try and simplify the message. And at the end of this video, I am going to put Aurelian's reply to me on screen so that you can read the whole thing, because there will be bits that he's covered that I'm not going to address. And hopefully between the pair of us, that will help you to get a bit of an understanding about the difference. If we start with the concept of a display referred workflow, as Aurelian described it in his email to me. It basically comes down to this idea of working in a color space that matches the output display. In other words, the physical device on which the end product will be viewed. Now, in this day and age, that's a massive range of different types of devices from cell phones to laptops to desktop monitors to TVs to cinema projection systems. And there's probably a bunch of other things that I can't even think of. There are so many different types of display. So, you know, I go out and I shoot an image that I'm really happy with. And I think to myself, I want to put that on Instagram. Great. But you know what? The minute I put it on the net, I have neither the knowledge nor the control over what types of devices that final image gets viewed on. Now, you might ask, well, why, why does that matter? Well, the whole idea of the display referred workflow is that you say, 
this is the blackest black that this particular device can output. And this is the whitest white that this particular device can output. And you render your image, and there's a caveat there, which I'll come back to in a sec, into that color space where we say black is 0%, white is 100%. And if we're using a gamma, then we can basically map middle gray to 50% and we work within that color space and we do all of our editing in that color space and at the output, we send it to the monitor. Great! As long as the whole world is looking at my monitor, which they're not. So this is the main problem with a display referred workflow. Everything is based on the particular device upon which you do the editing. You can see where that's going to fall in a hole very quickly, right? Scene referred workflow. Actually, no, before I get to that, let's just go back. I said there was a caveat regarding the image. If we think of particularly the raw files that come out of a modern day digital camera, whether it's DSLR or mirrorless, doesn't matter. You know, the cameras of today, as I'm recording this, 2021, you know, we're easily achieving dynamic ranges of 14 and sometimes 15 stops of light, which is a massive range. It's approaching the limits of human vision. It's not quite there, but it's close. But our display monitors have nowhere near that range. So the big issue there is that if you're starting with a raw file captured on a you know, modern current digital camera, you've got this dynamic range that's like this all the way from the, you know, the blackest blacks in the shadows all the way to the brightest whites in the sky or, or whatever it is that you're shooting. If you're working in a display referred workflow, then you're probably working within goalposts that are only this wide. And I think I mentioned this in one of the episodes I talked about. <laughs> I can't remember if I left this in or if I ended up ditching it, but I talked about I, I came up with this analogy of playing soccer on a field and that, you know, do you only play within the lines or can you, you know, kick the ball all around the city? But, you know, the minute you want to kick a goal, which in the analogy meant, you know, render an image to output, then you actually had to get the ball back inside the bounds of the field and kick it through the goalpost. I can't remember if I left that in or, or, or I didn't. But the same thing applies. You know, if we're starting off with an image that has this massive dynamic range, but we're working to a monitor that has a, a limited range, then we're hobbling ourselves right from the output or, or from the outset. I mean, like right from the start, we are, you know, we, we're ditching so much potential information because we've crushed everything down to fit the limits of the display device that we're working on. And we're going to do all of our editing within that color space. And then when we've finished editing, we go, beautiful. It fits within the limits of what this particular device can handle. And so now I can send it to the device and everything gets displayed beautifully. But the point is that we missed out on the opportunity to work on a much bigger color space during the pipeline. And that's what the whole idea of the scene referred workflow is. It's to keep all of the luminosity and the chromaticity, and I will confess to not fully understanding how those things go together. Like I understand what they are. Luminosity is, you know, how dark a shadow is or how bright a highlight is. And the chromaticity refers to the intensity of the color within an image, but I don't understand how those, those two things are linked. I'm sure Aurelian could expand on that. But you know, if we stay with the raw data that we captured in camera and we edit within that bigger space, then we can do a lot more things with the data. And then 
right at the end of the pixel pipeline, to use the you know, terminology that we all know from Darktable, we can then, right at the point of output, say, okay, I've still got this massive range of data, and now I need to be able to output this for the web where I know I've got to get within the bounds of this color space here or that color space there or that color space over there, whatever it is. And so you then crunch all the numbers down to fit within that smaller space right at the moment of output. That, in essence, as I understand it, is the difference between a scene referred workflow and a display referred workflow. There's a whole lot more nuance to it, I am sure, and there is certainly more in Aurelian's uh, email that he sent back to me. And yeah, in terms of how you should approach the processing, I'm not 100% certain that it has to change, although Aurelian did make reference in his email. He said something about, I've seen people who try to apply a display referred workflow to a scene referred workflow and it falls flat on its face. But he didn't expand on that idea enough, for, at least not enough for me to understand why that falls apart. I have to say for myself, okay, there's a gazillion modules in the darkroom view of Darktable, right? We've, we've all seen them. There's like 50 or 60 different modules. And if you're anything like me, you've probably got, you know, your 10 favorite modules that you use all of the time. That's certainly me. Maybe I'm lazy. I don't know. And I don't really stress about whether the modules that are my favorites are deemed to be scene referred or display referred. I just use what I think needs to be used. Now, it's worked for me so far. I think, and I'm, and I'm sort of going out on a limb here, this is not something Aurelian has said, but I think if I understand it correctly, the danger with using those modules which have been, you know, identified as being display referred modules because of the way they're coded, and I don't understand the code, where it becomes an issue, including those in your workflow, is if you are being very heavy handed with them. I think if they're minor adjustments it'll be okay. I think, like I said, don't know for sure. Anyway, I am going to leave it there for the moment. And right now I am going to let you read Aurelian's, and it really is, it's a bit over a thousand words. So thank you very much Aurelian for sharing what you know and helping those dummies like me who don't understand. <laughs> so have a read and I'll uh, come back to you in a sec. Okay, so hopefully between what I've said and what Aurelian has written, that has made a little bit of sense to you. And yeah, uh, gotta say, for those of you who don't compile their own from GitHub, what's coming in 3.6 looks great. Uh, I've been slowly keeping up with the development builds, not not on a regular basis, sort of once a month or so, I'll go and update 
the development build on my machine. And yeah, some of the stuff that's coming in 3.6 looks really nice. Really excited. Good times ahead. All right, people, that'll have to do it for this one. Hope it helped. Questions, comments, feedback, sing out down below. You know the drill. And I will catch you in the next one.